This is a phased array GPS antenna that I made uh, back in 1995. You can see it's only two elements, but that was enough to have fun with. Uh, I built it uh, with you know two wires coming out of one one out of each element, and uh, one wire I made longer than the other, so I would have a null, a vertical null, uh, that goes around like that. However, I made a mistake. I made, uh, instead of adding a half a wavelength to one of the wires, I added uh, more than that because uh, I forgot to take account for the uh, velocity factor, the change in the speed of the si signal down the wire compared to in free space. So the null actually is in these directions, and it's actually, uh, um, so it's knocked down a little bit. So uh, because if the long, the long wire is on this element, short ones on here so it in order to compensate get some extra delay that this has that, that I gave it accidentally uh, then it has to the signal has to go through space a little bit longer so that means it knocks the null down in this direction so the null instead of being the null right you know right vertical uh, and being being a plane between the two it's an annular null it's a cone that intercepts intersects the um, the plane at these angles. I don't know exactly which angle because uh, I don't really know the velocity, fa velocity factor in this coaxial cable. <laughs> I got, got off of Wikipedia it said uh, coax about 0.66 but I kind of wanted to give it a range so that's why I have those marks there. I have it mounted on a theodolite light that I made there's not much light down there out of a tripod that I inherited from my grandfather and I put this platform on there and put a protractor on it so I can easily turn this turn it and measure which way it's pointing I have a little it's a little dark there but I have a little marker that I can move around and calibrate it so I also have a uh, way of measuring azimuth which I'm sorry elevation which isn't on here right now it's simple I just mount a protractor along the length of this and have a, a thread hanging down and that measures the uh, elevation. So I tested this when I built this in 1995 I tested it. Oh one more thing I uh, here's my nice uh, splitter I like uh, put, a lot of put a lot of effort into selecting this this one from the catalog because uh, I didn't I didn't want to well and it, and it works out pretty well. All right. So anyway, I tested it in 1995 using this GPS 100, Garmin GPS 100. There's not much light on that. There we go. Uh, <clears throat> which I bought in 1992, around January of 92. And I was able to watch the signals, strengths, it was just there were numbers. It wasn't it wasn't a graph, the numbers, and uh, I had to compute where in the sky the satellite would be because, based on their almanacs, because I didn't uh, this thing didn't tell me. But luckily now, I have this thing. I couldn't get this thing working anyway. <laughs> uh, luckily now I have another GPS, Garmin GPS 95 meant for airplanes, and uh, I'm sorry, 295, and. Uh, uh, this one works nicely. Let me uh, turn the. <laughs> this is my my replacement battery pack for it. A couple of lithium ion batteries. Okay, turn it on. This one has a nice. Enter. Come on. Oh, here we go. It has a nice display of uh, where the satellites are in the sky, which is really nice. And it has a graphical display of the satellite strength of the satellite strengths. And so that's what I tested it with this time. So I'm only going to be testing uh, azimuth today, looking for satellites low on the horizon. Uh, see what they do.
Okay. Alrighty. That way. I'm trying to line this up so it points west. So it's yeah, so that so this is the direction I'm concerned about. So let's see. Okay. Now I'm ready. Uh, this is the splitter where the both, well not splitter, it's a combiner today. Where both the wires come in, one wire is longer than the other by a half of a wavelength in free space. Um, like I said, that was a mistake. <laughs> but, so I'm going to take the output of this and hook it up to the GPS receiver. There's the output. See that there's a satellite around nor pretty much northeast, number 32, and there's the power. Right now the, nor the null is pointed west. So let's see if I rotate it by 45 degrees, if it, if it drops some power. Okay, oh, I'll need to widen up. Okay, I'm going to rotate it. Let's see what happens. 32. That increases in power. Huh. Not great. There we go. All right, here's a good example. As I point the null, this null, toward 11, watch 11 go out. There we go. Now, it's coming toward, there we go. There's a min, 11 stays out until I rotate it some more. Come on. I think 11 is really close to the horizon. It might be behind this. All right, the 32 should be doing the same thing as 11. Let's see. Um, okay, 32. As it gets pointing northwest. Wait a minute. Okay, let's start over. Here we go. Now it's pointed, the main line is pointed to the west. And as I rotate this null into it, four should go out. Eleven's going out. <laughs> Come on, four, go out. There we go. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. And now as I... It's about due west now. Pointed. Yeah, now it's out. And now four should come back up as I go past it. Look at that. Oh man, four and one are pretty close together, so they're acting similarly. Okay, I'm going backwards the other way, so I'm going to go through uh, the null, and I'm approaching the minimum, or the depth of the null in that direction, and well, there might be a lag in the in the display. There we go. Four is out, and. Why don't you go out too? Come on, go out, go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now they should both come up again as I continue rotating the other way. There's four. Although there were. And one's coming up. Although we're kind of. Both nose are going in this direction, so the, the general strength. 
the gain in this direction is influenced by the fact that it's near the nulls. It should be better in the other direction, so I'm going to try that. I'm going to watch 1 and 4 go out again. And... Yep, out. 1's coming back up and 4's coming back up. We should get a good, strong signal out of both of them as I move, move away from that null. There we go, look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try number 22, which is... 22 is close to the zenith. Ah. Let's try 24. 24 is um, slightly east of northeast, and it's, uh, it's, up, a, it's up a bit. So uh, I have to unwind this. Okay, so now, now the main axis is, is lined, lined about east and west, and 24 is maybe 10 degrees above the horizon, uh, and it's east of northeast, so it should be in, that's north that's northeast okay east east of northeast okay so let's see what happens to 24 as i rotate the right the right lobe toward it okay well actually it's it's not on the horizon so i should i should um, i'll do it this way i'll get 24 into a into a no, uh, Null by tilting it up. Um, wait a minute. I might be right. Okay, so, okay, so there we go. Let's try it. Before. There we go. All right, I'll tilt it up like this. And 24. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, 24, 24 went out, <laughs> and let's move it. Let's move it around. Some more coming, coming in. Come on. 25 went out. Where's 25? It's about 45 degrees. That's that's about right, because the the, the um, elevation is about that high. So it's about 60 degrees above this. I don't know. I'm so cold. Okay, enough.